Hey everybody, it's Tony Moore here at Universal City Walk for Day of Days 2018, and I am joined by the one and only, returning back to Salem, Mr. Kyle Lauder. How are you, sir? I'm so good. It's good to see you again, man. It's so good to see you. And thank you so much for coming into our studio like a while ago, just to like reminisce about your first time on Days yes. and everything. It's all my pleasure. And you know, you have me anytime, anytime. Yeah, because we go way back. We we do go way back. Yes, we, yes. Uh, I During the show, I told Kyle that him and I met before. And of course, you know, he meets a lot of people. And then I had receipts. And so I showed him a picture. And I did remember. I told yeah. you, I, I saw the picture. It was like, I do remember that moment. It was like, but 2000, what did we say? 2002, three? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, yeah. He yeah, was just like a little like young and coming to a fan of it. And yeah, exactly. And now look at this guy. I know. I'm, look, I'm trying to make it as big as Kyle, but like, I don't, I don't, I'm not there yet, but I'm almost. Well, you're almost. better looking, so that's all that matters. Oh, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know about that. I think that might be debatable, but, um, but I'm right there, same tier. So you're back in Salem. You're playing Rex. Um, how are you enjoying being back on the show, back on set, familiar faces? How is that? I love it, man. This is... Um I feel like I've said this so much, so forgive me, but I, it, it is, it's like, it's like coming home for the holidays, you know, it's like, like you're in college or something and you get to go home and see, you know, your parents and friends and family and like home cooking and all that. And that, that's, that's how it feels like days was my first professional acting job mm -hmm. and I was 19 years old and you know, you like, you remember your first time, no matter what it is in your life, like that's every day on days was like a series of firsts. And I just, I remember everything about starting out with this show. And then, you know, I, I finished my, my original tenure and then I went off and did other things in my career. And coming back um, was just the, the amount of gratitude that I have to be able to, I, I said this in an interview, but it's so true. It's like to get to do what you love to do for a living is a true blessing. It's not very, it's not common. Yeah. You know, so I, I have that. But then you get to do what you love to do with people that you love to work with. And that's like, a, that's even better. Yeah. And then the third tier is like, you get to actually do what you love to do with people that you love to work with at a job that you love. And then you have all, and that's what I have with days. You know, yeah. it's a full three tiered um, situation. And um, I'm so humbled by it and, and so grateful for it. You know, and I, I walked on set and you know the faces are this is such a cliche thing to say in the entertainment business but it's like that the faces are like family you know yeah, i i moved cross country from new york to la at 19 like i said and and i left my parents and friends you know and my brothers and back home in new york and and the people on days were my new parents and friends and siblings and things like that yeah. so i see these faces and it's more than just for me than just seeing a coworker that I really like. It's it's like that that really cool bond, and that's what it's been so far. Being back, yeah. and I just I I'm very protective of the show. Days, I've been I've done other projects and, and other shows, and Days is the only one that I've really kind of kept in touch with in terms of what, catching up every once in a while on TV because I really am I care about the show and the people on it. So yeah. being back, being an entirely different person, 13 years later, um, I'm a dad now. I have a different perspective in life. A broader deeper perspective in life and to be able to come back and have this experience again you know um, at this point in my life is just really really cool yeah. now how did it all come about because for some reason I always just assume that anyone who's been on the show before there's a specific bat phone that you guys have and only Ken Corday has the number to it and when he's ready for you he picks it up and calls you and you're like I'm on my way kind of like a Charlie's Angels kind of a thing too but so how did far off from that actually it's like usually like you know i can't give away the, i'll tell you when the camera stops rolling okay. it's kind of yeah i mean it's it's um it started i i came back i was in vegas for a year doing a show and then i then i went to new york and worked in new york and then i moved back to la and then ken and i ken corday um owner of this show obviously mm -hmm. we we reconnected over this novel ladies yeah. of the lake that he wrote exactly and yeah. that's when a long story short i've told it before but it was like oh my god like we need to develop this into a series you know yes, yes. and then he and i kind of reconnected through that and then you have casual conversations of would you ever come back to the show yeah mm -hmm. but it's all about timing in this business and like yeah. what's the character what's the story mm -hmm. does it make sense mm -hmm. and will the fans like it what, you know all that kind of stuff and, the, right. and and that's like a slow simmer like slow boil if you will to kind of gauge all the moving parts and then it kind of comes together and then it's like somebody has an idea for a character a story 
the fans, you know that the fans are ready for it through social media or whatnot. You drop little hands and the fans are like, yes, oh my God, we don't care who he plays, we just want him there. Yeah. You're like, okay, now it makes sense for everybody. And that took, you know, a few years. Yeah. And then, then, then ultimately... I was I, rooting for you. Thank you. But then, yeah, then I, you eventually get, I got the call and was like, there it is, you know. Yeah. But it, it was, a, like I said, it was a, kind of like a slow boil, slow simmer mm -hmm. for a while. And then, then, then it boiled over and then here I am. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah. And at, yeah. Least, at least you didn't have to arrive in like some alien form yeah, like, no like it did originally. Yeah. There was no tinfoil uh, tunic. No. Not tunic. Uh, what's it like? Like like bathing suit. What was that thing? It's like a wrap, because a tunic is the full body. Full body. Yeah. This yeah. was no. There's no. There was no tin foil. Like Rex is. Rex is like a full blown human being, full human being now. and yeah, he's yeah. a doctor, yeah. and he's like yeah. So yeah. none of that. When I was when I found out, I was like, I'm playing Rex. Am I falling out of the sky again? Right. Like, <laughs> is it like did he go back up and right. he's coming back down? Like what's yeah. happening? What, what am I doing now? So yeah. no, it's cool. But yeah, that that being said though. Um, I can't say too much. We always say this, but it's true. But they, 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 Ron is doing an insanely good job. Ron Carlovati, our head writer, is doing an insanely good job of like peeling back Rex's layers, like slowly but surely, because we're six months ahead, like yes. I said. So over the next course of the next six months, we're going to see little layers being peeled back, and then and then continuing continuing after that yeah. as well. He's a very complex character. I yeah. like him a lot. I'm I'm having a blast. I mean, you definitely have entered Salem in a huge way with like reconnecting with Mimi. Now you have a baby, oh, so, and it's yeah. just it's like bam, Rex is back. Oh yeah, no, Ron is he doesn't he doesn't pull any punches. It's like the yeah. scene like like my second show or whatever. Like he just put Eric Martzoff and I in a bar and said, yeah. oh, Brady, yeah. Rex, hey, we're like yeah. we're gonna just address this now. Now, whereas and a lot of a lot of head writers would not would kind of like not they would ignore the elephant in the room or like they would just be like and eh, we'll just pretend it never happened you know right, yeah. Ron's like no like forget that we're gonna, like we're gonna put you two in a scene mm -hmm. we're gonna be like Rex Brady Rex Brady cool we got this we're good you know yeah, and yeah. and so you just we just he's diving right in with his character mm -hmm. and um, I'm so grateful for it because yeah. you know I'm I get a lot of really cool things to play I'm in a, involved in a lot of different storylines and yeah so so good. far so good man good okay so uh, here at uh, After Buzz TV's Dish and Days we like to play Play little games, and uh, you you might be you might be pretty good. Now I know that I'm like a very well rehearsed human being, and this is <laughs> this is very spontaneous. But okay, spontaneous is it's always good. You know, it's good. It's here, okay. You're you're with me. I'm I gonna guide you. you. Okay. You're safe. It's totally fine. There's a room full of witnesses. You're good. So. <laughs> Um, at, w <laughs> at one point, you you had a role in Vegas on Rock of Ages, yep. so of course you were you know immersed into the rock and the history yes. and all that kind of yes. stuff. So I decided to play a game with you called uh, Rock Legend or Myth, where I'm going to read something to you and you have to decide whether it's true or a myth. Okay. You think you got it? I'm going to kick your ass later. All right. Okay, Here we go. Mama Cass of the Mama and the Papas died choking on a ham sandwich. That is true. No. <laughs> Do you see no. I that yeah, yeah, you owned it. Like, like for two seconds, I was like, "Whoa, is it true?" Luckily, I had the answers on the back of the card, unless I would have believed see, them. I almost convinced you that it was true, did, even though it's false. Did. Well, it's it, it's a myth. Well, she actually, we uh, she actually died of a heart failure, but there was a ham sandwich she, nearby. Then I'm half right, mm, I, but not totally right. Not totally. All right, right, moving on. Okay, here you go. You ready for this one? Yes. Jimi Hendrix wrote the song Purple Haze after dreaming about walking under the sea. That sounds too crazy to be. That's got to be true because it sounds crazy. You're right. It's actually true. There you go. See? I brought you back. Here we go. Yeah, we're 50. Gene Simmons of Kiss had a cow's tongue surgically attached to his own. That's No, that's not true. You're right. It's a myth. Uh, many people thought that because he had such an abnormally yeah, long tongue, insanely long tongue. But yeah. that's just obnoxious. That wouldn't. It would never take. It would. It would never take. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One more, and then and then we have okay. to go. Let's uh, let's see if you can do this one. Jack White and Meg White of the White Stripes are brother and sister. No, they're not. You're right. They're they were actually married and now divorced. Yes. There you go. See, that. see, that wasn't bad, right? Yeah, it was, it would, yeah, we were, you we were on the precipice of disaster, <laughs> but we saved it. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us, and welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Sorry, thank you guys. Really. Thank you. <laughs>